What's up, peoples? It's Gendo here, and welcome back to the Basque Boys. As always, if you are still enjoying the series, please do go and drop a like. Now, we got our last two matches of the season here against Granada and the rivalry versus Real Sociedad. we got to play that. And both these matches are pretty important because if we lose both of them, we drop from third to fourth, meaning that we don't get automatic group placement in the Champions League next season. We're six points ahead of Atletico Madrid, but they hold the tiebreaker ahead of us. So we just need to pull at least one point from these next two matches, and we got ourselves into the group stage of the Champions League. Nothing new with you guys to go over except Susaeda is out for the rest of the season with a twisted knee. But other than that, let's get into the matches. So going into Granada, we're going to make a couple of changes just to get players some fitness. We're going to have Ghana in net today. The back line will be Lekwe, Garcia, Laporte, and Yuri along that left side. Up the middle, Benya de Traspe, Marino, the bog standard midfield. And of course, you got your bog standard front three of Muniain, Javias, and Villalibre. Like I said, only needs a point, and we got ourselves third place on lockdown. So let's go kick off and see what happens. And while I can't complain, we got Champions League football for next season. I would be a little happier if it's automatic group spots instead of having to play through the playoff. I would also like it if we take all these chances that we've been apparently getting, all these shots that we've had, and put them on target. Because so far, no highlights in this first half. 29 minutes on and we finally get our first highlight. Some great passing movement. Muniain coming into the box, taking off the ball, no penalty. And then a real, real bad pass, ultimately killing that attack. Apparently, Granada have a forward by the name of Obama. And Obama's coming forward. Ghana should never be letting that through. Obama scores. <laughs> uh, so we rotate, and our defense is still killing us. I mean, we don't have Mikel San Jose due to suspension, but he should be marking Obama. And Ghana just letting the slow roller through. I know he's 19 years old, but Jesus Christ, dude, you need to be stopping that. And right now, Villalibre is looking uninterested, defenders looking nervous, and Ottengana looking furious. I'm sure he's looking very furious over that dumbass goal that he gave up, boys. We're going to swap our tactic. We're not going to be using this anymore. We're going to the 4-2-3-1, which would mean that we need to swap somebody out. And that, of course, is Itaraspe. Itaraspe is going to be coming out for Unai Lopez. Everyone else is staying the same. And we're going to go out and be a little bit more attacking in the second half. We need to come away, like I said, with a, a draw or better to get ourselves secured third place. And against Granada, we should be doing that. Corner kick, ball come inside. Unai Garcia has been fouled by Javi Ross. And guess who's stepping up to take it? It's not Mikel San Jose, thank the Lord. Benyat is going to be stepping up to take this penalty kick. He has converted two out of his last two can he make it three out of three? Of course he doesn't. I mean, I of course I can't get any penalty kicks to go my way on camera. They just don't. <laughs> uh, and Ben Yates, not just a good free kick taker, just a good set piece taker overall. So, <laughs> of course, he misses the penalty kick. Because the game knows when I'm on camera. Free kick, Ben Yates out of the box. It's wide. And we are not going to win against a team that we should have gotten points against. Uh, it didn't help that Ben yet missed the penalty, but at the same time, we had created so many chances up front that I have no idea how we did not score versus the Granada side. We lose 1-0, and that was simply put not good. Should have come away with a win, meaning that we need to come away with a point versus Real Sociedad to keep our third place spot. Now, Atletico Madrid play tomorrow, so I'll show you the results of that before the Sociedad match, but god damn, this is this is disappointing. This is absolutely disappointing. Well, it looks like it's my mistake. Atletico played on the same day as us, thought they played tomorrow, but they only came away with a one-all draw versus Oviedo, meaning we have third place locked up. Now it all comes down to, can we finish the season strong versus our rivals? All right, so now we don't care about positioning anymore. It's all about pride taking out our rivals in Sociedad. Traveling up to San Sebastian today, coming out with a 4-2-3-1, and this is how we're going to line up. Ruffier back in between the sticks. Lecue, Garcia, Laporte, Monreal along the back line. Marino, Benyat, the two center mids. Unai Lopez taking in that cam roll. Muniain, Hervias out on the wings. Villalibre sitting up top. And actually, for this last match, just in case Unai Lopez doesn't do all that well, I have Diego Tomei, the youngster that is coming through my ranks in the hopes that he can then take over Unai Lopez's spot. Will he get some game time? Quite possible, depending on how the result is. 
uh, I would love to try and get him some first team football, especially in this last match, just to just to you know show his progress and development. But all depends on how the match actually goes about. So let's go kick off, see what happens, and let's end this season on a high note. Final match of the season, looking to try and take it to him early, trying to utilize those flanks, the wing play that's been working so well for us all season. If we can just get it working here we can start racking up the goals. But unfortunately, nine minutes on, and it's Sociedad coming forward. It's a great dispossess by Monreal. Interception out on the wings, playing it up the side into Muniain, taking a shot, but Domenech right there with the save. Hervias has just pulled his hamstring, and I don't know who I could swap him out with. Unai Lopez. Unai Lopez could apparently play on the right, so I guess we're going to be getting ourselves a dose of Diego Tomei, a debut for Diego Tomei 34 minutes into this match as I don't have anybody else I could play on the right. Uh, Susayet is still injured with his twisted knee, so Unai Lopez got to play out there. Diego Tomei, come on, son, show me what you can do. Well, apparently showing me what he can do is uh, picking up a yellow card now even five minutes into his debut. Great. So coming into halftime, we have more of the possession, we have more of the shots, but we're just not taking better care of those shots. Only one has been on target so far, and uh, that needs to definitely change. Benyat, 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 Benyat on a 6-5 you're more than likely coming out for Linton Jr. This is going to be the day of youth uh, with Linton Jr. coming out to replace Ben Yad. I want to try and use his pace to get the ball out towards our forwards. Well, can we see it done? Hopefully. Players currently on the pitch there under 25. It's Tomei, Via Libre, Unai Lopez, Linton Jr., and Unai Garcia. So right now i got a pretty young squad out there, uh, especially in the midfield that uh, is desperately in need of uh, some turnover because Itaraspe is over 30, Eraso is over 30, Benyat's over 30. So yeah, I'd love to try and integrate a lot of my youth midfielders into the squad for next year. And well, I would love to see them actually get it done today. And it's just not, it's just not doing it. It's another, it's another over the top goal. Maybe this is just a byproduct of me playing on attack where I'm just pushing all of my defenders up because... It's just another, it's just another game of cat and mouse. It's just another game of chase that my defenders are losing every single time. And not only that though, but Real Sociedad are down to 10 men and it looks like they are just stealing themselves being uh, down to 10 men and playing extremely well, which is not good for us. We have the man advantage, yet we are playing absolutely garbage, though. Diego Tomei, can he spray a pass out wide? He can't. This is what's going to be even more disappointing, is we're going to lose and having the man advantage. When we should be just absolutely barnstorming Real Sociedad now, we're looking very timid. We're looking very timid, not just on the attack, but the defense. We're letting them get through our back line. And it's absolutely unacceptable. All these breaks, all these breakaways, and why aren't you going after it? Number 15. And that was Lekway. Lekway was run on the overlap, but still, we're going at it. We're going on the attack. Why aren't you pushing forward so we can get this match tying goal? And it's going to be another disappointing 1 0. This hurts even more, not just because it's a rivalry match, but because we had the 11 on 10 advantage and we let them get a goal on us. What a shit way to end the season. At, no, I am far from pleased with that result, up and down. I mean, I'm glad that Atletico got themselves a draw in the last match. Otherwise, hell, we could have gone to fourth place. That is the worst way to end the season. How many wins did we end the season with? I think we ended on a, like a six-match lose, or not losing, but a winless run. Yeah, look at that. Look at how badly we collapsed this last, these last seven matches. No wins in our last seven. I have no idea. I got no words for how this team played for the, this last half of this, or not last half, but this last portion of the season. We did so well, so well from the start of the season onward. And then, like a light switch, as soon as we hit Real Madrid, losses. Losses, losses, a draw to Las Palmas, which should never have happened. And then I'll, I'll, I'll take the shock draw versus Barcelona. This match I'm, I'm fine with as a result. But everything else, garbage. The upside is we did finish in third place. We are going to get uh, just over 4 million euro for our finishing position. And we got ourselves into the group stage of Champions League next season. So that's the, the lone positive, the only positives that we can take out of this for how poor 
piss poor we played in these final seven matches. So a little bit of admin before we get into our final stats rundown on the season. We are upgrading our youth facilities once again so we can get them state of the art and hopefully pull in some better youth uh, developed within our camp instead of having to go out to other places and buy them off of them and bring them in. So hopefully we can get that done and we can get better regens for the next few seasons. Our current head of youth development is retiring. I'm going to need to find a replacement for him because he did so damn well for us. I need to find somebody who can basically have a lot better stats than what he's got right now. 15, working with youngsters. The ability and potential are pretty damn high as well. If I can find somebody that is equal to, if not greater than him, and I'll bring him into the club and hopefully we can develop the youth a lot further than what we have going on right now. So let's take a look at the three main awards that are showing up in my mail right now. We got Messi winning the player of the year, the Jugador del Año, but Via Libre coming in second place. That is a sight to see. Yes, he beat Suarez, he beat Ronaldo, he beat Neymar, but he couldn't beat Messi. That's great. That's great to see him in the top three, and I'm sure he's going to be in the top three for years to come here. Outside of that, Via Libre not just sco uh, scooping up the Spanish goal scorer of the year, but also the Pachichi, which is the top goal scorer throughout all of La Liga nationality be damned. He got himself 30 goals in 32 league appearances, beating out Suarez by two and beating out uh, Caicedo. Felipe Caicedo had 20 and he was considered third place. Wow. Far and away, Via Libre, the best striker this season. And I'm glad that he has decided to stay with the club. You remember back in the transfer window, he was being courted by Juventus and Manchester City. I'm glad that he decided to stay on. Yes, I did throw a little bit of uh, hefty money at him, but you know, at least it was all for the best. This is a young kid that deserves to play for this squad and develop on the squad. And uh, hopefully he can stay with us for the for long haul. Right now it's stats time and it's obvious who the top goal scorer for the club is. It's Via Libre with 38 goals in all competitions. You just saw that he had 30 just in the league alone. But 38, pretty damn special. Couldn't hit the, uh, the, uh, the Zara, the Telmo Zara record. But hey, 30 goals in a season, that's special. I don't care who you are. Outside of that, Munayin, Munayin breaking 20 in this season. Didn't think that we would have had anybody else over 20, but yeah, as you can take a look, we had five players in double digits. Herbias, Bautista, and Benyat also getting 13, 12, and 10 respectively. Great to see that it wasn't just a one-man show in Via Libre, that the, the love and the joy was being spread around and helping spread that all around. These are, these are the top assisters we got going on. Munyain with 18 assists as well, along with Herbias and Via Libre. Via Libre, double-digit assists. Who would have thought? 13 and 10 respectively. Mikel Marino getting himself 9. Very close to breaking those double digits. And then overall average rating for the club, it's Via Libre, 7, 5, 6. Uh, I thought that would have been a lot more. In fact, it's a lot more in the league. I guess everything else just brought him down. But hey, Laporte getting himself a 7-4. Muniain with a 7-2-8. Overall, everybody playing very well. More than half the squad getting themselves above a 7 average rating. That's good stuff. Helps me figure out who I want to keep onto the club going forward. Uh, one thing I do got to say, though, is that Gorka Elustondo is going to be retiring. I mean, I didn't play him at all this season. It was more just having him on as a backup. But at this point in time, I'm not going to be playing him. I was just going to let him run out his contract, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing. And then he's going to be retiring. So that's uh, one area that I need to worry about going forward is building up the defense. I mean, I have youth prospects coming through on both wings left and right, but I just don't have any good developmental prospects coming in through at center back. See, I have this problem where I just cannot find or develop good defenders. I'm, I found all the midfielders and I found the forwards that uh, you are seeing currently uh, being developed, but it's just that defensively, I can't either develop from within or find anybody out there that I could bring into the club that's, uh, that's good. Um, the, the Basque regens and just the defensive regens in general uh, are sparse when it comes to defense. So I need to start scouring far and wide to try and bring in some veteran Basque players. As far as transfer targets go for next season, Ander Herrera is top of the list. Yes, he's 30, but he's better than every plus 30 midfielder that I got going on at my squad right now. So bringing him in and having him be an extra tutoring force on the squad could help develop my midfielders even further uh, and then integrate them into the squad. Outside of that, Oyathabal, Zaldua. I mean, Zaldua is probably the guy that I'm probably gonna go for just so I can have him as a prominent backup 
to Lekwe. In fact, I was thinking about picking him up if Lekwe decided to leave the club in the first place. So, uh, yeah, Oyathabo is also a good young prospect from Sociedad, but Sociedad really wanted to hold on to him for all this time, and it just doesn't look like he's developing all that well at the club. Yes, he's got himself a, a hefty amount of appearances, but a 6.87 average rating, that's not really reaching his potential. At the same time, He's an, he's an attacking mid. I have several attacking mids coming through the squad that I want to develop myself. I don't feel like bringing him in will help out the rest of the team. It possibly could, possibly won't, because I want to try and develop from within. Outside of that, uh, in, I was looking at Inyaki Williams because he's been a decent backup. He's been a super sub for Spurs. But yeah, I'm not going to pay 60, 70 million euro just to bring him back. It was my dumbass fault for not having the buyback clause on him. So yeah, I think it's just, uh, uh, just a wave goodbye for Inyaki Williams because I'm not going to pick him up anymore. But anyway, guys, that's going to be the end of Season 4. It did end on a sour note, to be honest with you. But hey, we got third place in the end, which means automatic group stage in the Champions League. That's fine. I'll take it. Not the way I wanted to go about it, but hey, we got it anyway. Anyway, guys, hope you liked the episode. If you did, please leave a like on it, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. If you want to leave a comment about this episode, the season, or the series as a whole, please leave it in the comment box below. I do appreciate every comment you put forth. And also, I would say let me know about what transfer targets you want me to go after, like veteran players. If you want me to go after Herrera, Oyathabal, anybody else, please leave it in the comment box below. But anyway, guys, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video in the next season. Take care, and peace out.